So for the first part on how to install AGPM, let's go to the demo machine. So on this demo machine, this is a server 2008, nothing really special here. We're going to actually load the MDOP pack, which comes uh, in a CD format. So in there, you'll find the AGPM version 2.5 and 3.0. Now, what's the big difference? Well, as you can tell here, uh, if you're dealing uh, with Vista SP1 and above, you should uh, have a look at AGPM version 3, because this also supports, as you can see uh, in comparison to 2.5, it supports 64-bit for both server and client. It also supports, for example, the new group policy preferences, which are one of the functionalities that you will get in the GPMC offered in Vista SP1. So for that reason, we're going to focus only on the AGPM version 3. And this is the version that uh, offers most functionality. Now, before we get into the installation, let me quickly guide you through the AGPM documentation, because it very clearly states what the requirements are. And so if we scroll down, we'll see what the requirements are for installing the AGPM server and the AGPM client. Now, what I've actually done here already, uh, before uh, I went into this uh, recording, as you can see, the, the requirements for the server, of course, are the GPMC, which by default is available on server 2008. Uh, it's just part of the RSET uh, components that you need to install. But I already went ahead and installed the uh, .NET Framework 3.5. So you won't see me walking through that ag again, but it's already happened here. So the second thing that I've done is actually through the server manager, I've decided to install the feature uh, located in the remote server administration tools, and that feature is called GPMC. So as I said, uh, in just a second, when we're going to install the AGPM client, the client is nothing more than a, an extension of the GPMC. So for that reason, I went into the remote server administration tools. I've actually picked a specific, uh, not feature, it's not in the, uh, sorry, it's actually over here. Yeah. So we've actually... Um, installed that already in advanced GPMC which is important for our client. So that being said let's get into the installation of the server. So for the server this component is already there we have our other prerequisite which is the .NET framework so let's get started. Now first, one of the first things you noticed is to be capable of installing, you should be a domain admin. Um, so let's accept on that. This will be the default location uh, where the application will be installed, program files. Now the second question we're being asked is about the archive part. The archive, as I said, when we talked about the architecture, is where we're going to take all our production or some of our production GPOs offline for editing afterwards. So that, by default, is actually stored in the program data Microsoft AGPM. Now, you will notice that once we set up this folder, it will actually be secured by uh, this process itself and by the AGPM service so that there's exclusive access for this AGPM service account. This service account that I've just talked about is going to be requested here. This is actually the server service for an AGPM that requires access to the group policy object. So what I've done here actually is went into the Active Directory Users and Computers and I went to create this little uh, service account AGPM SV, uh, SVC now this is a plain user does it have to be a domain admin? well it could but it doesn't have necessarily have to be a domain admin so what are the privileges required? 
Well, in the end, you have to remember it has to be capable of not just getting group policies, but also creating group policies in production. Because it's not just a question of getting the policies from production into the archive, but also being capable of pushing them back from the archive into production. And so that is all about the delegation that is set up by default. And so when you would look at the GPMC, these are actually the people that are capable of creating not only group policies in production, uh, and so it should be a member of or domain admins or uh, the group policy creator owner. Or I could actually decide to add my AGPM SVC account. That is another alternative. So by doing so, it means that this account is now also capable of uh, creating objects, group policy objects, uh, within uh, our production environment. So you have the choice. You're going to make this account or member of your GPO uh, creator owners. You're going to make them a domain admin. Or you're simply are going to delegate this account the right to create objects in uh, the group policy environment. So that's the choice uh, that I've uh, made here. It's a simple domain user, just has very specific rights delegated to it. So we're going to select this account, the service account, AGPM, SVC, as its password. So the next question we're being asked is, this archive that we've just pointed out, where it's going to be uh, stored in the program data, who should own it? And this is very important because the owner uh, will actually be the AGPM administrator. So this can actually be a account or a user group. So what I've done here actually in advance again, is I went into my groups and I started to create some additional groups relating to AGPM. Now I have created several groups, and I'll talk about them in just a couple of seconds uh, in a second part. But this is a crucial group, I think you understand the purpose. These will be the people that have full control over the AGPM infrastructure, if you want to call it like that. So the AGPM admins, in my uh, case, will be the owners of the archive. And so it doesn't necessarily have to be an account, it can also be a group. So we're going to choose for the AGPM admins. Now, let's have a quick look at the AGPM admins, who is member of this group. Currently no one, so I'm going to add myself in there. So Kurt now becomes an AGPM admin. You can see actually there's no one else in there uh, except for me. Okay. So. Now the next remark it's making is uh, the port that uh, the AGPM will be actually listening on. Now by default it's actually uh, 4600 and as you can see it will also add uh, this exception onto the Windows firewall which is uh, quite essential of course. So we're happy with that. Next. In this case I could choose to well uh, keep all languages we're going to do that actually next and here we go so these are the components as uh, mentioned before that are required we know about that we've done the necessary so off we go with the installation So what is happening now, of course, is that this service will be created. And this service, as I said, will be called AGPM service. You should see it appearing in just a couple of seconds. We'll go back to it in just a second. And it will run in a very specific service account context, security context. And that will be our AGPM SVC account.
So, server setup has been finished. If we go back to our services and quickly refresh, you actually see indeed that we do have our AGPM service and that is actually now started up uh, in this service context being AGPM SVC. Good. That actually concludes the installation of the server, which in our scenario is running from a member server. This member server uh, will now be capable of talking to a domain controller, synchronizing all or uh, part of the group policies that we're actually going to select later on. And now we just need our client component, the extension of the GPMC, to be capable of adding that. So for that, I'm going to do this on the same machine, but you'll probably do this on a Vista SP1 box. Um, we're going to go into that process. So again, the same story. Uh, the requirements that you would uh, uh, need for the client are very clearly identified in here. You would need a .NET Framework 3.0 and GPMC. Now, as you know, on Windows Vista, that is part of the RSET uh, toolkit, uh, toolkit or RSET bundle that you can actually download here. Uh, you need to install that through the features and programs. Once you do that, you have the GPMC available, and so at that time, you'll have all the prerequisites. Uh, uh, so here we go. The client accept on that. The default location for our client program files. And then of course it needs to understand where our AGPM server is located. In this case it's our local machine but let's behave like these are two separate machines so what we would typically do is we would go into uh, the DNS we would actually create some kind of an, an alias and I've already uh, done that in advance you see AGPM in there which is nothing more than an alias you could simply create an A record but the point is that it's not necessarily referring to this statically chosen uh, the, the static name of the computer so we're going with the DNS alias of course it's on the default port as we've uh, pointed out before we will allow that through the firewall again happy with all the languages and off we go again as we said the prerequisites we talked about that and the install kicks in. Now once this has finished um, you will actually find out that the GPMC will be extended with one specific node. This node will be called change and allows us to connect to the uh, advanced group policy management uh, server infrastructure or server so we have access to the archive so with this click finish go to close the uh, advanced group policy management console have a look at the GPMC here he is now notice that here at the bottom when we actually connect, you see a change control. Well, in the meanwhile, we have the client setting up connection with the AGPM server, checking out which uh, group policies are controlled in the archive, and this is actually what we would find back. So, if now we actually go back and we look at our uh, group policy management console we would see the extension that was made by the AGPM client which has added this uh, separate node which is indeed our change control as you can see here and which actually we briefly saw uh, it establishing a connection to our AGPM server. The AGPM server which is actually identified on this tab, the single on this specific port and uh, pointing to the uh, DNS alias that we've created. Now, if you're wondering about should I actually configure all my clients manually uh, through this, well, you'll find out that within AGPM there are some templates provided. And I've actually created uh, myself very briefly um, 
used one of the templates so you will find actually that there is um, a administrative template that is very specifically meant for AGPM in which I can actually configure logging but also if we actually have a look at our user settings there's a very specific one uh, in which we can actually point to our server so in this case using uh, the setting you'll notice that I've actually for my domain made them understand that you should actually talk to agpm.win2008.net so even when you would roll out um, these settings through a, a group policy it would then be you can say enforced it would then by default be pre-populated you could now very simply um, distribute this client which is nothing more than an MSI packet so you can actually distribute it to a group policy make then uh, make sure then that the AGPM server um, information is pre-populated through these uh, similar uh, group policy settings and so in this way you would have a transparent setup of the AGPM client and the pointer to the AGPM server so with this we're finished and so let's go back